Come and listen to my story about a man named Chad. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. is here to haunt you. What? Miss Chickadee Laverne. That stripper you engaged for one of your business dinners? I am not a stripper. I am an exotic interpretive dancer. <laughs> and I've got a great new act for your bankers convention, Mr. Drysdale. That is Elmer and me. Elmer? Isn't that Ellie Mae Clampett's raccoon? Yeah. Gee, it's a cute act. See, I'm Little Red Riding Hood, and I'm walking through the forest with a basket of food for my granny, and I get lost, and this raccoon finds me. He's sitting on a rock, and when I pass by, he reaches out with these cute little hands, and he unties the bow that holds up my skirt. <laughs> then... Miss Laverne, we are not interested in the sordid details of your ecclesiastical performance. What'd she say? Don't ask me. And shame on you for contributing to the delinquency of a raccoon. I shall harbor him safely in my office until such time as I can return him safely to Ellie Mae. Come, Elmer. What's with her? Without Elmer, I got no work. Yeah. Get yourself another raccoon, but not for the banker's convention. I don't think the act is suitable. Oh, so you're backing out on me, too. Just like the Clampets did. The Clampets? Yeah. I was promised an engagement up in their mansion. Then they changed their mind. Jed Clampett would never hire you. His idea of entertainment is square dancing. Well, I've danced for plenty of squares. <laughs> and speaking of squares, it was that big kid Jethro that asked me. Miss Chickadee, I love you. Will you marry me? Jethro, your granny tells me you got thrown out of school today. Yes, sir, Uncle Jet. I got thrown out for writing on my writing desk. What's wrong with that? I think it was because I'd done the writing with my pocket knife. <laughs> well, you've been doing a lot of foolish things lately. What's come over you? I think the boy is ailing, Jed. Looky here. His school lunch. Ain't even been touched. Jethro, don't eat. He's ailing. Everything in there that he likes. Grits, jowls, ham hocks, and pole. How come you didn't eat them, boy? Uncle Jed, can I tell you the truth? Well, I hope you always will. I ain't hungry for grits or jowls or hawks or pone, neither. All I want is chickadee. Well, why didn't you say so? Granny, fry this boy up a nice big pan of chickadee. There's everything in here that he likes. Now, what's this? That's my writing desk I wrote on. <laughs> chickadee, ain't that that big strapping girl you brung home the day that you went courting? Yes, sir, Uncle Jed. Found her in Miss Hathaway's office. Yeah, she's a mighty handsome woman. Said it afar, and I'll say it again. She's too old for Jethro. I'm deep in love with her, Granny. Hogwash. <laughs> How come you never spoke up about this before? Well, I knew Granny was a her. I was afraid you might be, too. So I thought I'd run off and marry her and live happy ever after. <laughs> Jethro, it takes two people to make a happy ever after marriage. What makes you think that Miss Chickadee is in love with you? Well, she loves me enough to get engaged. Well, you all heard how happy she was about that. 
Come to think of it, I recollect her seeing somebody engagement, Granny. Double hogwash. If she shows up here, I would shed the both of them. But I'm telling you the truth. That big kid, Jethro, was sitting right here. And when I came out of your office, he jumped up, grabbed me, put me on his truck, and drove me out to his Uncle Jed's mansion, where I was promised an engagement. Jethro is a headstrong, impetuous lad given to irresponsible behavior at times. But I assure you, Mr. Clampett would never engage the likes of you. Listen, honey, you don't know those oil millionaires like I do. They give some pretty crazy parties. Now, Mr. Clampett, now take your tawdry bauble and go. <laughs> Gee, where am I going to find another raccoon? that knows how to unfasten a dress. I'm sure you have a surfeit of ignominious methods by which to practice your reprehensible art. Oh, sure. What'd you say? I know you have lots of acts. Oh, sure. I, yeah, I got uh, bubbles and fans. Maybe I could even go back to my old act, the one I'm famous for. You know, the one where I break out of the egg? That's how I got my name, Chickadee. But that Red Riding Hood bit sure had zing. Took a long time to learn, too. Yes, now, now, now if you'll excuse me, Miss Laverne, I want to give Ellie Mae the good news about Elmer. I bet if the Clembert saw my Red Riding Hood act, Will that they would hide... Will you please go? Well, all right. Gee, what a grouch! <laughs> Jethro, too. Jane Hathaway here. Oh, Miss Hathaway, I'm sure glad you called. I've been trying to get up nerve to call you all week. You see, I'm deep in love, and I want to get married right away and live happy ever after. <laughs> J Jethro, you are an impetuous lad. <laughs> this, is, this is so sudden. <laughs> oh, no, it ain't. Why, I've been in love ever since that day in your office when we looked at each other and heard music playing, heart music. Now, calm down, dear boy. I'm coming up right away to bring Ellie's raccoon, and we shall pursue this further. Oh, thank you, Miss Jane. I figured if anybody could find Miss Chickadee, it's you. <laughs> well, thank you, Jethro. I'll find who? <laughs> Chickadee Laverne. Jethro, I I'm flabbergasted. Well, thank you. Will you find her and bring her up here so I can marry her and live happy ever after? <laughs> I'll do what I think is best. Uh, I'll do my best for you, Jethro. <laughs> Uncle Jed! Uncle Jed! Well, Chief, the fat's in the fire now. You and your exotic dancers. Corrupting that sweet, innocent boy. What are you babbling about? Jethro is in love with Chickadee Laverne. Oh, baloney. At his age, I was in love with every showgirl I saw. It's puppy love. Jethro thinks it's the real thing. He says they looked at one another and he heard music play. Music? Oh, I know how that happened. When Chickadee left my office the other day, she had this little concealed transistor radio. So obviously, when she ran into Jethro in your office, he heard the music and, and thought... And thought it was love. How horrible. Ah, oh, forget it. Jed Clavett can handle a case of puppy love. Miss Hathaway. There's a raccoon in your office. Oh, no, 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 Jenna, don't panic. You've seen a raccoon before. Not like this one. It keeps trying to undress me. <laughs> Couldn't catch him, huh, Ellie? No, sir, Pa. Jethro's running top speed, and he just keeps a yelling for you. Well, we let him circle the house again and head him off out here. Jed, look what Jethro done. I was sitting in my rocker and he run me down. Didn't even stop. Well, you gotta remember, Granny, that boy's in love. We's gonna stop him this time around. Well, when you catch him, I'm gonna smoke his britches for him. Uncle Jed! Sound like he's round in a far turn. Uncle Jed! Want me to trip him and set on him, Paul? No, I'll head him off, Ellie. Uncle Jed! Uncle Jed! You come in slowing down now, Jethro. I'm right here. <laughs> Now what is it, boy? Miss Hathaway's gonna find Miss Chickadee and fetch her over. Yeah! I'm gonna see my sweetie! <laughs> Jethro will put that truck down. Who <laughs> dropped it? Jeff 
throw you acting like a beast stung bobcat. He's in love, Ellie. Jethro, you go have yourself a nice long swim in the seaman pond, and we'll let you know when Miss Chickadee gets you. Yeah! <laughs> that wild young and I'm so dad burned mad, I could bite nails. <laughs> Granny, I reckon you forgot how it feels to be in love. Why do you suppose I'm so dad burned mad? <laughs> You know, Duke, just between you and me, I can't blame Jethro for his feelings toward Miss Chickadee. I was about to fall for her myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's the truth. I didn't aim to. It just happened. I looked at her, she looked at me, and dugged if I didn't hear music playing. <laughs> Uh-oh, yonder she comes. Howdy, Mr. Clancy. It's me, Chickadee. Howdy there. <laughs> What's the matter? Is there something wrong? Yes, ma'am. I mean, no, ma'am. I reckon you want to see Jethro. Right this way. <laughs> wait, wait, Mr. Clancy. It's you I want to see. Now, ma'am, you don't want to see old broken-down mountain goat like me, all crippled up and wore out, good for nothing. What are you talking about? Me, ma'am, I'm older than the hills. Who cares? Now, turn around. I want to talk to you. What about? About the engagement you promised me. No, no, that wasn't me, ma'am. That was Jethro. Word of honor. So it was Jethro. Do I get it or don't I? Well, we're folks that keep our word, ma'am. If you was promised, I'll see that it's kept. Good. I'll go get my clothes in the car. You already brung your clothes, ma'am? Yeah, it's the outfit I work in. Red Riding Hood. Where do you see it? Well, now, Miss Chickadee, I'm hoping you ain't gonna rush things, because I think a long engagement is gonna be best for everybody. Oh, that'll suit me fine. The longer, the better. Because I don't hardly think you're ready. What do you mean, I'm not ready? Well, you remember how you told me about coming from a big egg? Oh, yeah, but I've learned something new since then. Yeah, that's a step in the right direction. Now, a raccoon finds me in the woods. <laughs> mm -hmm. Miss Jane, I sure do appreciate you bringing Elmer back. Oh, my, my pleasure, Ellie. Uh, could you tell me where I might find your handsome <laughs> cousin? Who? Jethro. Oh, Jethro, he's out swimming and see me at pond. Thank you. Something tells me we're finally going to make music together. And I am shocked at this nefarious scheme to trap handsome but innocent Jethro. Is that what they taught you at Vassar, Wellesley, and Smith? <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, I got the idea from a stripper. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a matter for levity. Remember your sorority motto, super omnia fides? Yes, yes, of course. Honor above all. Conscience. Yes, Jane. I'm sorry. I must have lost my head. <laughs> Forgive me. Conscience? Yes, Jane? Go take a flying leap! <laughs> <laughs> oh, howdy, Miss Jane. Hey, did you bring Miss Chickadee? No, forget about her, Jethro. Look deep into my eyes. <laughs> And now, stay tuned for the news. <laughs> Ellie, Ellie Mae, oh, Ellie Mae. Here I am, Pa. 
Good. Now, uh, Miss Chickadee is in that room up top of the stairs there, fixing to change your clothes. Why don't you run up there and see, can you help her? Yes, sir, Pop. Oh, uh, you better leave Elmer here. Him being a boy raccoon and her being so innocent, he's allowed to be powerful modest. What you mean, Pop? Well, uh, let's just say that she ain't had things explained to her too good. Now, run along and uh, see, can you give her a hand? Give who a hand? Miss Chickadee. Is she in this house? Right at the top of the stairs. I'll give her a hand right where it'll do the most good. Uh, Granny, maybe you better hear this setting down. Hear what? Jethro is engaged to Miss Chickadee. No. He give his word and she's holding him to it. She's too old to marry Jethro. She's too old to marry anybody. Why, she's done past 20. In years, maybe, but in some ways, she's just a little child. Besides, women gets married older out here. What you mean? I hear tell of a movie star that got herself a man when she was 27. Oh. And then, just to prove it wasn't no fluke, she up and married five more. <laughs> Jethro, just once more, gaze deeply into my eyes. Have you brushed your teeth today? <laughs> Miss Jane, are you going to help me find Miss Chickadee or ain't you? I ain't! I'm not! Well, I'm going to go out and find her for myself. Jeff, Jeff, well, listen to me. We can make music together. Please, just give me one more chance. And another thing about her, Granny, she ain't lazy. Why, she's up there right now putting on her working clothes. We'll see. We'll see. Miss Chickadee, the coming! <laughs> Them's her working clothes? Yeah, I reckon that's a dust cap on her head. <laughs> what you got in the basket, Miss Chickadee? Why, it's a basket of food for Granny. <laughs> Did you hear that, Granny? Yeah, I hear it. I'll wait till I taste it before I get too excited. <laughs> now. Stand over there. You can see me work better. Oh, well, uh, if you're going to show off how you work, I'd best go fetch Jethro. He'd be right interested. All right. Now stand right over here so we can get a good view of everything. That's fine. Now you just watch. I'm sorry. <laughs> you mean she's here? Yes, ma'am. I think she's fixing the dust to haul first. Get ready for a wedding, everybody. Jethro and Miss Chickadee's gonna get married right away. Who says so? The code of the hill says so. He done seen her in her underclothes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's all right, kid. <laughs> Anybody can miss a cue. How'd you like my act? Well, I thought you acted real nice, considering I'd have been a heap more flustered than you was. <laughs> that's experience, honey. Let me see my basket. No, ma'am, but me and Elmer will help you look. I don't want to lose it. That prop food costs plenty of money. What's prop food? Oh, it's made out of plaster and cement, stuff like that. <laughs> That'll keep Jethro out of our way for a spell. What'd you do with him? Throwed him in the cement pond. I told him swimming five miles was part of getting proper engaged. That boy will swallow anything. Well, he'll have a time swallowing Miss Chickadee's cooking. <laughs> you know that basket of food that she brung me that she was so all fired proud of? Yeah? 
Makes you a nice looking loaf of bread. Yeah? Let's see you slice it. <laughs> don't seem to be strictly fresh. Why don't you come right out and say it? It's as hard as a rock. Taste of might like cement. I don't think she used any baking powder. Or yeast, neither. I ain't even sure she used flour. Well, it's a fine looking slab of ham. Ain't got much of a hickory cured smell to it. Ain't got no smell at all. You know, Granny, I think this woman's trouble is she overcooks everything. But I sure do feel sorry for Jethro. Yeah, the boy sets a great store by his vittles. Well, I'll just have to pitch in and learn Miss Chickadee about cooking. That ain't all you're gonna have to learn her. What you mean? Well, uh, remember how she thought she'd come from an egg? Yeah. She got herself a new notion now. She thinks she was found in the woods by a raccoon. <laughs> God, if she comes. She took off her work clothes. Sure. Now that she's got Jethro hooked, we ain't gonna get no work out of her. <laughs> well, come in, Miss Chickadee. I hope you're feeling right to home. Oh, I'd love it here. Well, I see you changed out of your working clothes. Oh, I thought everyone had seen enough. <laughs> I reckon Jethro has seen too much. <laughs> Miss Chickadee, I hope you still favor a long engagement like we was talking about. Oh, like I said, Uncle Sugar, the longer the better. I'm glad to hear you say that. Now, I'm going to leave you two alone here to have a little woman talk. Woman talk? <laughs> What we talk about? Everything, honey, right from scratch. And we'll commence with vittles. What are vittles? <laughs> oh, no, no. Well, we gotta start somewhere. Do you know how to fix a possum supper? I don't even know what a possum eats for supper. <laughs> You mean they're actually getting married? You see, Chief, I told you. I warned you that the consequences of your perfidious association with that oh, marriage... Oh, shut up. <laughs> Where are they, Ellie Mae? Well, Miss Chickadee went in the kitchen to talk to Poe and Granny. Jethro's in the cement pond. I'll circle the house and head them off the pool. <laughs> I said take the skillet and put some lard in it. Why is this cooking bit? I came here to dance. I declare I never seen a woman reach your age and know so little about life. Now, you take this skillet before I whomp you with it. Ah, right. Well, I'll tell you this right now. If I'm going to cook, I'm going to get paid extra for it. Get out of here, you scheming sex pot. How dare you order me out of my own kitchen? What's all the learn about in here? Oh, Mr. Clamp, a thousand, a thousand apologies for ever allowing this woman to come in contact with your wonderful family. Come on, Paul. Oh, better let you have this skillet. Give it to him. He can probably cook better than you can. Now, get this straight. I'm here to dance, not to cook. Well, if Jess Ruth's got a choice, I know he'll take cooking over dancing. That boy is overpower and fond of vittles. Who cares about Jethro? Well, I hope you do, seeing as how you're going to marry him. I wouldn't marry Jethro if he had your money. Well, I wouldn't marry you neither, Miss Chickadee. Well, that suits me fine. Give me my basket. Get me out of this nut house. <laughs> Boy, what they don't want for their money? You gotta clean the house. You gotta cook. You gotta marry the kid. Wowie, wow, wow, wow. Yes, Ro, I thought you said you were deep in love with Miss Chickadee. You said you wanted to marry her and live happy ever after. And Granny, I could never live happy ever after with her. Why not? Well, Uncle Jed? It was all I could do to choke down one basket of her vittles. If I had to eat them every day, I'd die. Now 
now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.